this is my um, author illustrator brochure just a quick little overview of it um, I chose Jerry Pinkney he is really famous for the Aesop fables and illustrating things like um, the lion and the mouse and I chose the book um, the moon over stars um, a little bit of biography he was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on December 22nd, 1939. Uh, he studied at the Philadelphia College of Art and he received the Alumni Award in 1992. He's been illustrating books since 1962 and the total amount of books from that period of time is more than 100 books. So he's illustrated and authored a ton, a ton of children's books. Um, and not only are they popular in the United States, his books have been published in 14 different countries and were translated into 16 different languages, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, he's been awarded numerous awards, um, the list would take forever to read off, so just a few of them would be the Caldecott Award, he has five Caldecott Honors, and that's just like a little bit below the Caldecott Award. And then he was awarded five Coretta Scott King Awards, which we had been reading a book about all of those some point in the semester. Um, like I said, he has over 100 books, so I had to narrow down his bibliography quite a bit. Um, the favorites that I picked out were The Talking Egg by Robert D. Sansusi. Um, uh, Pinkney just illustrated that book. Pinkney illustrated Minty, a story of a young Harriet Tubman. Uh, he was really big about um, making sure the illustrations were historically accurate, um, especially for like the Af African American culture. He wanted that to be accurate so people could be exposed to that when they read it. Um, uh, the Moon Over the Star, which is the book I have, and I did a report about The Lion and the Mouse earlier this year. And I just really fell in love with his watercolors and his illustrations. In that book, it was a wordless picture book, so his illustrations had to be spot on to get the story, so that's why I chose that book. Um, his styles for his illustrations, it's mostly watercolor. Um, you could argue that it's his favorite. Uh, he said that in an interview that he goes to watercolor because it's transparent, so you can make mistakes. And you have to be happy and welcome, he said, the quote-unquote accidents. So, like, even if you didn't mean to do it, you know, it would still probably look good. And he said it's really challenging for him, but he enjoys the challenge. So I thought that was interesting, because you couldn't tell that they were challenging by looking at the illustrations. And for his writing styles, um, he usually is involved with books in... Um, describing historical events so he wants them to be accurate illustrations and writing. Um, he draws hidden pictures and kind of like foreshadowing clues sometimes to see if children will discover them. It's kind of fun for the kids. Um, he highlights African American culture to children in most of his books. Um, I'm pretty sure four or five of my bibliography books are about African culture in some way. And his writings and illustrations earned him the honor to actually be able to design the first nine stamps in honor of black heritage. So I thought that was pretty cool too. And uh, I will read you a little bit of this book called The Moon Over Star. first page. Um, Once upon a summer's morning in 1969, Grandpa led the singing in church, the light of Sunday gleaming on his silvery head. Through the open windows our voices sailed, over star our town. Then we bowed our heads and prayed for the astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin Jr., and Michael Collins, 
If all went well, a spaceship would land on the moon today, and I dreamed that maybe one day I could go to the moon too. My gramps thought the space program was a waste of money, but I knew he was praying for them too. I thought about the astronauts' kids and wondered if they were scared. Scared, but proud. I know I'd be. I slipped my hand into my dad's and whispered so only I could hear, God, please bless the astronauts as children, too. Once upon a summer's noon, my cousins and I scouted Grand's watermelon patch for the biggest one. It took three of us to carry it to a tub of ice, three and a half, counting my littlest cousin, Lacey. We decorated the picnic table with pails of wildflowers. Then, our chores done, we built our own spaceship from scraps we found in the barn. Here is an illustration of the rocket. I wonder how many miles it is to the moon, Cousin Carrie said. I've been reading the moon stories in the papers, so I knew. About 240,000 miles, I said, and some scientists say it's moving away from us an inch or so farther every year. I also knew that in May 1961, a month before I was born, President John F. Kennedy had said America would send men to the moon before the decade was out. Now that President Kennedy was in heaven, I wondered if he could see the astronauts. Was he smiling to know his dream? Was he, was it about to come true? That afternoon, we were helping Gramps with the tractor when Gran hollered, Come quick, they're landing. Gramps kept right on tinkering with the engine. The rest of us ran pell-mell for the house and squirmed around the television screen as it glowed, with equal parts of moon and the spaceship called Eagle. We heard the voice of Commander Armstrong directing the landing. Forward, forward, he said. Then the newsman we all knew, Walter Cronkite, exclaimed, Man on the moon! For a split second we were silent. The whole universe must have been. As we waited and waited, waited to hear the voice of an astronaut 240 miles away, and then... Houston, Tranquility Base here, Commander Armstrong said, The Eagle has landed. Boy, did we cheer, all of the cousins and even the grown-ups, all except Gramps. I remembered something he'd once said. Why spend all that money to go to the moon when there's so many folks in need right here on Earth? Because we can, I almost shouted but caught myself. I began to wonder then what Gramps' dreams had been. From the time he was little, he had worked the farm, doing the same jobs day to day, season to season. Um, that's about halfway through the book. Um, again, it's very historically accurate. Um, even has like the correct names and probably the situation of many families back then. So um, I would highly recommend this book and thank you for watching.